and governance. Restoring the dignity and honor of marriage. Mastering your life and destiny. Living right and strong with God. Manpower development. Encouraging modesty in dressing. Parenting and family development. We're on to D and D with Ima Ifadike. Good evening and welcome to D&D Diagnosis and Dialysis. I'm your host, Emmanuel Chukukadibi Ifadike. We seize the moment to bring to you felicitation as a, as a Nigerian and to the country in Nigeria. We wish you God's blessing and we pray and declare that God will continue to bless Nigeria and that uh, righteousness will exalt this nation and sin shall not continue to be a reproach uh, unto us. We we'll pray that God will strengthen our leaders, starting from those that are in political authority, to lead us in the home, lead us in the marketplaces. We shall all take responsibility to make this nation a better place. Thank you very much and God bless you. In this special program, we want to talk about amoral and immoral living. Immoral living means a quality of life that is short of the sta acceptable standard or that is not measurable to the standard or, or precept of goodly and godly living. And then our morality talks about when you are morals living, when people are giving to the flesh, always wanting to please their body, to selfishly trying to please the self, either romantically, uh, sexually, or otherwise. And if we look around, we see that our society today, again, a lot of things are not the way they used to be. And there are many reasons. Remember, in D&D, we try to diagnose, that is to say, to critically and analytically find a cause of why these problems are so and also profess solution by way of dialysis. Now if you look around again, life is becoming very stressful and tedious. Why? Because a lot of people are dishonest. People are no longer trustworthy and reliable. You cannot ask somebody to stand in your stead. You can't trust a, a, a somebody to buy you something. He will always stop money on it. You, in your sight, people will be stealing your, your materials. So even workers in a lot of uh, artis, artisans, a lot of things, people are no longer truthful. They are no longer honest because of covetousness, a lot of vanity, a lot of haughtiness. So it become a problem. So you either do it yourself or you wait or you permit yourself to be cheated or to be exploited. You give somebody something to go to the market, he'll buy inferior things and he'll swear and, and will, not, he will never tell you the truth. So we see in a society also other than that we have a, a lot of simplicity. People do not weigh their action before they take action. People do not consider the consequences again. People do not defend themselves. We see a lot of irresponsibility. People say things and they don't mean what they say. And some also mean things and they don't do what they say. So a lot of problems. We see a lot of inappropriate behavior. People do sit anywhere they want to sit, say any things they want to say. It's just a field that is their life. Nobody controls them. Nobody wants to be under parental control, under government control, under the control of the law and order, under God's control. People are just growing and just want to be themselves and do whatever they want to do, not want to be submissive or accountable for their life. And this is when we behave like this, we become bestial and animalistic. But God did not create us so. God created us so that we will submit ourselves to him and he will he has set his precept. That's why the Bible is called good news. He teaches us how to be goodly and godly and so that we can then live by the precept and the principles of God and fulfill destiny here on earth. The laws of the government are also meant to, to preserve and to protect us, to keep law and order so that we live right and we live strong and we fulfill destiny. But when we continue to feel that it's our life, we don't want to submit ourselves to parental control. We don't want any control. We don't want authoritative control. We don't want uh, institutional control. We don't want systemic control. We just want to do anything that we want to do. If everybody behave the way they want to behave without regulation, without control, our society become very bestial and we have a lot of anarchy. Rights will be, people will be overtaking other people's rights, surpassing other people's rights. As what we are seeing today, a lot of people are, you know, by reason of might, we want to terrorize others, we want to use your money to intimidate others. It's 
because again a lot of us do not have any goodly or godly conscience to weigh and to judge our action that's why in this in this program we want to diagnose why is it that there is so much immorality People are no longer lovely. They are no longer kindly disposed to another. Young men are not helping the aged. Young men do not honor or respect the aged. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you also see if it, if it, even in school, so there is so much problem. Uh, people are, are more interested in their body, their flesh, what they wear, what they drink, what they eat. A lot of gluttony, a lot of haughtiness, a lot of vanity. You want to external beauty, a lot of cosmetism, a lot of hypocrisy. That's why we are, we, are, we are trying to look into this problem and we see that our society again, people are living on rugged edge, people are fearful and a lot of people also, you are seeking validation. It's because a lot of people are living outside. You know, there is no goodly, there is no godly confidence that comes inside. Remember Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Confidence is from your inside. When God begins to comfort you, I will not leave or forsake you. He says to you, a man's life does not consist of the abundance of what he has. You begin to find fulfillment. You win all these internal wars, all these prompting that are coming from inside when, they are, when there is absence of the word of God in us, when there is absence of the fear of God in us. So for us to begin, we must know that to live right and strong, we must permit God to govern our life. That's why Jesus Christ came and died in Romans 8.32. God spared not his son Jesus Christ, but he gave him to us that through him we shall live a goodly and a godly life. And that's why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you begin to permit God to moderate your life, it becomes wisdom and knowledge become the stability of your time. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 1 begins to talk about 24 and 30, that Jesus Christ is the wisdom, the power, and the sanctification of God. So when you are trying to please men instead of pleasing God, it means that you are far from God. So in this program, we want to see why is there so much immorality and amorous living? Number one, absence of fear of God, absence of self-control. You can't control yourself except God who begins to control you by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And also when you recognize that the fact that you're living, you're living under the basis of grace and truth which Jesus Christ brought. So you're living by grace. You don't have power to live. You don't have power. It's just that God gives you power. That's why when you wake up in Psalm 5 verse 3, it says, I sleep and I wake up because God sustain me. No man has power over his life. It's just God that gives you life that you live. And that's why your body and your life belongs to him. You have to account for it in Hebrews 9 27. It's appointed for a man to live once and thereafter die. So when you come to God, God does not put down one. He that is above is the one that will help us above. He that is above help the one behind. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 75 verse 6, that promotion and prosperity does not come from the east, west, or south, but from God that judges all men. He has the power to put down one and to exalt another. So don't be in a hurry. Galatians 5.22 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It talks about love. It talks about peace. It talks about patience. So when the Spirit of God is dwelling in you, the Holy Spirit begins to moderate and make your body. He gives you peace, gives you the peace that surpasses all understanding. And then it begins to keep your heart and your mind. You become a temperate and a goodly and a godly person. You are no longer greedy. You are no longer dishonest. You are no longer unreliable. You are no longer irresponsible in all forms, whether in your comportment or your deportment. So like we said, number one, try to be goodly. Try to be godly. Submit yourself to God and he will begin to help you. It's so easy. Jesus Christ simplified Christian life. All these things that are prodding and tempting you is because you don't stay under his presence. You don't read the word of God. You don't take God serious. You don't go to church. You don't your communication and your association. It's just because you are with toxic and corrupt people. But when you because remember 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says evil communication, corrupt good manners. But awake unto righteousness. So when you begin to stay with goodly and godly people in fellowship and when you mean what you're doing you resolutely decide to serve the lord study and read the word of god i'm not talking about religious activity i'm talking about your staying under god god makes you to be outstanding your life begins to be embellished and you're nourishing your soul and you be, you win inside and you win outside now when i come back in after the break time We'll continue at our rundown and tell you some of this problem before we profess solution. Please stay with me. Don't go away.
Welcome back to D&D Diagnosis and Dialysis. In case you're just joining us today, we are talking about immoral and amoral living, where people are just living them, their life bestially, and today there is a lot of strife and contention. Interests are interests, are, there is a lot of conflict of interest, and no, no, no dispute resolution, no solution. People are no longer problem solvers. People are no longer solution-oriented. And because of that, people are dying before their time. So much stress. But now, why is there so much immorality and amorous kind of living? Number one, we have a lot of premature exposures. Premature exposure, both sexual and otherwise. Parents are watching their children now, very young age. You see them, they, they, both in terms of the movie they watch, in terms of the kind of phone they are using, in terms of also what they, the kind of magazine. I don't talk about reading books now because a lot don't even talk, read books any longer, not to talk about the kind of books they read, but the kind of pornographic film they watch, the kind of association they keep, you know. So parents must learn to, to defend their children while they are growing so that they, they don't have, get into ex toxic exposure, places where their affection and their emotion, where their being will be corrupted. So every parents you have a responsibility to defend your child as they are growing but today we notice that a lot of parents you permit your children some of them are digitally and technologically more advanced than the parents so you don't know anything you are using your the 20th, 19th century formula of parenting to children of this digital age you find out that you'll be deficient and they will, because you because you don't understand system you don't understand their dynamism you can no longer you can longer mentor them or train them or teach them right so try to upgrade that's why we said men should be going to conferences women should be going to conferences but you are more interested in your market and your business place and that's why your children are growing uh, they grow up uh, amorous living and in kind of immoral lifestyle this is very terrible so we want to encourage a lot of parents stop being an absentee parents and stop relicting your responsibility remember parenting for now and eternity has a life consequences you train up your child in proverb 20 Two, six, when they grow, they will not depart. When you're old and weak, they then take care of you. But if you're busy building monument, edifice here and there, and do not spend time with your child or with your children, you don't look into their homework, you don't tell them story, and you don't also admonish them, you don't guide them, you don't instruct them, you don't show, you don't prepare them to meet their future. You see that, but they, in your presence, they will sell all that property. They will so trouble you that you die before your time. Some will even wish you to die immediately. That's why. It's good now to begin in good time. Number two, there is a lot of depreciation and degradation of moral values. Parent, children don't learn again from parents. Parents do not have any, any quality living, no value. You stay before your, your child and you smoke, you drink, you beat your child, you tell lies over the telephone in the presence of your, of your children. They begin to learn that. You don't wake up on time. Nothing to learn. When we're growing, even with or without light, my, uh, my parents used to teach me, keep your shoes here, keep your, uh, your watch here, keep your sandals here, your books should be here. So life of orderliness, that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, it says in 14, let all things be done orderly and decently. So we must teach our children orderliness, decency, including on how to dress, how to speak. Sometimes again, parents don't train their children. They talk before them anyhow. You don't know that. You must discipline them and train them uh, in respect of communication so that they develop communication skills. So we want to appeal to a lot of parents, be serious with God, be serious with moral standard, and be scrupulous also in everything that you do. You are the first model, first example. Your children are watching you, the way you talk, your desires, your affection. If you're smoking, your children will grow up smoking. If you're drinking, because they feel that by reason of their parental model, is very idealistic. So they learn by observation, not just by your talk talking about what you're doing. The next again, we see a lot of dysfunctionality. Parents, please always stay back at home. Some of you from one meeting to another, your child never knows you. Your child never believe in what you believe. Bible says, I know Abraham in Genesis 18. Whatsoever I teach to him, I commit to him, he will teach to his children. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, can they say the same about you? 
You have one life, so make sure that you, there is something you're handing down. When you look at lions, why lions are king is that they move in pain. They move in pride. They move together. They train their children, the, the style, the skill, the boldness. Without effort, they keep their children on top of the mountain. The, the young, uh, the, the, the cops, they watch how the lioness and also how the lion, how they attack and destroy. Through that process, the cop begins to grow and begin to walk out very confidently and begin to attack and kill. That's how lion train. The same thing with eagle. So they train their children that same way. So training needs a bringing out effort, time, sitting down with your children and your family so that when they grow, even if they are prodigal, they will come back like the prodigal son. He will say, what am I doing here? I will return back to my father's house. It's a better place. But if you do not train them, nothing, their conscience will not condemn them or prompt or provoke them to return back to home. So we must be evil and the society is becoming very satanic, you know, it's, it's becoming very diabolic, a lot of wickedness, a lot of precipitation, a lot of action. So you must train your children, defend them in their spirit, in their soul, so that they can excel and sustain what you have embedded and invested in their life. The next again, we know that we see a lot of problems. There is a lot of pro issues now about government control, a lot of uh, absence of regulation and sanctionary powers. You see people drink, people do whatever they want to do. They feel it's their life again. And the, the sanctionary power and authority of governance and government is beginning to lack. And that's why we see people can literally do anything. And if you, if you want, even if policemen come without gun and everything, they, they even resist police. This man. So, in terms of regulation also, that's why we can watch all kinds of film now on the movie. We literally see people having sex, kiss, romance, and little children are watching. Standard, um, a lot of organizations that do not have again, do not control all this again. We remember when we were growing, it was Zebrudaya. People were running to watch, to learn. Family were sitting and learning. Now, all we learn in our home movie is a masquerade, is sex, is lie, is deception, is amorous and amoral living. And this is also affecting our children and our society. So parents, please watch whatever your children are watching, particularly when they are in a habit forming age, ages of drill from 10 to 20. You drill your child. That's why if you don't do that between these ages, the children again, every habit they form, it becomes very difficult for you to change it. That's why we said from zero to 10 is the time of spill. Be there for your children from 10 to 20 is the time of drill. Drill them. Teach them how to work hard. Teach them the, the pride of diligence. Teach them how to be truthful and trustworthy. Teach them how to comport and deport themselves rightly. Teach them how to dress moderately and modestly. Not seductively and provocatively and alluringly. Teach your children. When they grow, they will confidently know that this is ideal. This is germane. This is modern. And when they stand, they are standing up for you and for God. But when you are as a woman, you spend hours in a mirror making up your face. Every time you're eating chewing gum like matching gum. Every time, you know, you're wearing chain on your feet like a, a dog that is taking on a walk. Every time you dress anyhow, talk anyhow, eat anyhow, you don't even defend your body. Anything comes in. And your children are watching. And that's why when they grow, they get, um, they get immoral, they get amorous, and they want to please their body. So a lot of young women, please take note. Some of you, you are so careless, you think it's your body. You dress not even according to your body size. You dress not even to look modestly and moderately. Your dressing is even condemning you because if you're decent, you wouldn't dress the way you dress. So your dressing shows you simple and silly and stupid in the, right of, uh, in the eyes of reasonable men and women. That's why some are wearing night dresses and call because of Okrika. Some men are wearing pajamas and track you to church. You don't know that ideally in a civilized society, there, is, there are dresses to be worn to office. There are dresses for cocktail. There are dresses that you wear according to the moment and the dictates. But you are just dressing and you feel everybody because you, 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 every, you want to please somebody or you want people to feast over your body and your children are growing watching that. Well, when I return back in dialysis, I, I, I readily diagnose some others and then I prefer solutions. Please don't go away.
Welcome back to D&D Diagnosis and Analysis. We are talking about immoral and um, immoral living and amorous lifestyle. We also said that, please, a lot of parents, you will watch. Some of you, poverty is causing a lot of problem. That's you stay in one room and literally you have children and they stay and watch you have sex in their presence in one room. And all this again, they grow and think it's idealistic. Some parents do. You don't show self-restraint before your children. And some parents, you're always running after money and you stay in, a, in, a, in an environment or in a place where there are a lot of young boys and you don't care about your children, you move in the morning, you come back in the night and, will, and they want to display um, what they see others doing and because of that you see their life is, is frustrated and about the future of a lot of them. That's why we have teenage pregnancy and we have a lot of abortion, we have a topic pregnancy, we have a, a lot of sexually transmitted diseases. This is because of this problem and we see again a situation where a lot of uh, school system you go to a lot of university when we're there we have you stay in a hostel you, you have a porter watching over you now most people again some parents don't even visit their children they don't stay in hostel they stay in off campuses a lot of men pay for their hotel a lot of them carry telephone more greater than the amount you give you don't ask questions you, while your child is still uh, your children are still very young before you know it they, they even control you they even get telephone and give to you they are in school they are buying telephone and you're receiving how do they make the money that's why a lot of them are into court and into robbery some girls are into aristocratic prostitution because parental parental control is weak poverty has made you send that child to become a prostitute you're even feeding from the child that you have not even trained and you are not you are not feeling no comp, no compulsion no regret and you see that's the situation so some are in school but they don't have books some are in school they are not reading they are using their body selling their body doing anything with their body to pass or to make money to belong like others and we see them very amorous some do not even know that whatsoever you buy you sow you will reap and then whatever you're doing now will affect you in your future also, again, we see some of the new generation schools. On Monday, a child is wearing this uniform. On Tuesday, is wearing this. On Wednesday, is wearing this. They are using uniform now to show distinction in school instead of distinction in, ex in an excellence in academic. And a lot of parents are, are busy. Try just dump them into school. School is now a place where uh, taking the place of home 